Ladies and gentlemen, this is Gaming to the Com video. We have some rather bad news in the tech industry. Intel are going to be delaying its 10nm platform pretty much entirely. Now, the reasons behind this are pretty much what you can assume. Poor yields. In other words, the process just isn't mature enough, and therefore ramping up to high production isn't really going to happen. And obviously, pure example, let's say you're creating 100 processors, but 50 of them don't work, they don't function, they either aren't running at the right clock speed, or too many cores are destroyed, or you know the cache isn't working correctly, or what have you. It's not very good for profits. So, that means that uh, KB Lake, which is K-A-B-Y Lake, uh, is going to be effectively taking its place in the short term. So KB Lake uh, is going to be appearing in the second half of 2016, this, of course, was reported yesterday. We covered it. Um, Amy on the channel already covered this one. But uh, this was reported. Originally, the slide appeared by Benchlife. And it's fairly impressive to be on the specifications. It's going to have up to 128 megabytes times two of uh, on die package, uh, on package cache. I'm sorry. Intel, I'm tired. Uh, it's going to be one of those days, isn't it? But anyway, it's. it's at least something in the interim. So, the 14nm node, uh, we will be seeing some Core M chips um, ushering in the 14nm era in 2015. So, 10m, 10nm is really pushing the envelope. I mean, it's not, it's not in, in super duper impossible. But it's getting to the point where things are getting so tiny, so compact, and so difficult to design that it's it you know just a small little hiccup can cause a whole heap of delay uh, in these type of things. So the question is, are we going to see something else? Because there is possibility that you know the yield percentages and process maturity should also be a comparison because when one considers that. Intel doesn't want TSMC or Samsung to start overtaking it because if that starts happening, it could also lead to some very interesting scenarios in the tech industry. Because if you were to Google, and I'll let you do this in your own time, if you were to Google the partners that TSMC have, if you were to Google the partners that Samsung have, it's frightening. I mean, those two companies alone, they... Ha they 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 handle the manufacturing process for so many companies it is ludicrous from smartphones to amd and by smartphones I obviously mean you know everything from snapdragons and any low power processors to amd's high end processors these guys are going to be responsible for it they farm the various companies farm out the the responsibility to actually produce the dyes to these people. So the fact of the matter is, Intel don't want to shake some, I wouldn't say faith, but some of its credibility, which I guess you could pretty much say in this factor are, are pretty interchangeable. So Intel, they don't necessarily want to be beaten by to 10, N, 10 NM. But at the same at the same time, being beaten, they have to weigh that up versus how much can they actually afford to lose in terms of, you know, money. As I said, if the if the yields are really really poor, that could also be a problem. And obviously, they also don't want customers to be um, experiencing problems with heat or whatever because that's also really bad. Now, another little point that I kind of thought of is while to many 10nm is better than 14nm right just how 14nm is better than 20 or what have you it doesn't necessarily mean so i mean at the end of the day performance is what matters to the end customer so from a shiny point of view and saying yes we're the first two x does it really matter as long as to the end customer you and i it's the fastest. Now, in some cases, yes. So, this is vastly simplifying this, but one example would be, let's say, low-power devices, um, which obviously, we all know what they are, but let's say small form factor systems, um, tablets, what have you. 
people do care about low power and smaller um, processes in those cases because obviously less power means better performance for the same battery life. But a high-end gamer, let's say you are a PC gamer, do you really give a crap? Let's say you had one processor that pretty much performs interchangeably to another one, you don't really necessarily care as much regarding the process size, you more care about you know the end performance. Now obviously some of this is interchangeable, but Intel do have to make sure that you know the 14nm is powerful. If the chips are viable, if they've got good yields, if their chips are decent, in other words they've got a good performance over the previous generation, then they might not necessarily feel the level of pressure but obviously there is it's kind of a give and take it's it's a very tricky situation to be honest with you and we all know that this was coming to be honest with you as i said um it it's been kind of brewing in the background for some time and all of these companies have been actually fighting for this so if anyone's wondering where i've been i know you've missed me terribly it's it, it's fine you can admit it feel free to admit so in the comments but if anyone's been wondering, if I've just been absolutely ludicrously busy in the last couple of days. I've been starting the initial uh, reviews of the AMD 300 series, also starting the Batman thing, which is kind of a tricky situation because it's already being patched. So that makes things a bit interesting. Um, but we've been doing a little bit of capturing and so on. Uh, as I said, we've got... You know, we've got the initial graphics comparison up, which is obviously a good thing. But over the next few days, we're going to be doing something more. There are patches, of course, on all systems. It's like, yeah, the PC version's battered to shit, but it's not like the console versions are exactly where they should be either, to be totally frank with you. Um, so there's that. Plus, as well, writing some more um, interviews with a couple more companies. We've got a couple of videos popping up as well with some interviews. And some other bits and bobs, I'm um, in the background also scheming and conniving. Well, not necessarily in a negative way, but popping up with some stuff. So I have been around, but at the same time, it's just been a very transitionary time, if that made any sense. Anyway, I'm, I'm tired, so I'm probably not really even speaking English at this point. I don't know. Maybe I've learned a foreign language without knowing in the last few minutes and start to speak it. God, you can tell I'm tired. This is what you get when you called into an emergency meeting at work and you think to yourself no no it was supposed to be my day off anyway hopefully you've enjoyed the video i'll see you soon take care bye for now